in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. And I tell you guys, I love you. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I will ride with this group until they don't let us play more. I will ride with most of you. Some of you. When I tell you guys, I'm going to cut you. I mean, <laughs> I mean it from it. the bottom of my heart. And you'll be effing gone. <laughs> Adam, Dalvin, Eric, Eric you guys get the hell out of here. Pat so P. we gave you, uh, we gave you, if you haven't listened or watched already, a breaking Dalvin Cook episode here on Purple Daily and a scoop session on Minnesota sports with Mackie and Judd and the Score North YouTube channel with Doogie. Just some information about the Dalvin Cook news likely to be released in the next 24 hours or so. So. All of that covered. It's funny because the initial plan for today, and we're sticking to it with this episode, was to react to the latest Daniil Hunter stuff, which we'll dive into here in a second, presented by TCL. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. So, uh, Daniil Hunter... If you've been consuming this podcast on a regular basis, the news that came out yesterday is not shocking. We have prepared you for this since when, Judd? Like, oh God, January? Yeah, four months, five months. I think the day after the Vikings got bounced by the Giants, we did an off-season checklist episode. So January 15th or 16th or something. And one of the things I believe on that list was Daniel Hunter has a base salary of like $4.9 million. Yeah. He ain't going to play on that. So you're going to do the, the contract tango at some point. It's been super quiet on that front. February, right. March, it was. April, May. Yeah. And then Ian Rappaport comes out from NFL Network yesterday and says the Vikings are receiving trade calls centered around star pass rusher Daniel Hunter. And the interest is real. Sources say. So we kind of thought, boy, maybe they're quietly working on a deal behind the scenes. The fact that this hasn't come out at all before the draft or during free agency, that maybe they're just all on the same page. But this comes out for a reason. I don't think this comes out if both sides are on the same page and close to a contract, right? This type of thing comes out if there's a gap and one side or the other wants some movement. So what did you make of this when you saw finally, after months and months, the Neil Hunter thing starts to leak out as a big-time talking point? So what I made of this was saying, what took him so long? Why did it take this long for this to come out? Like, yeah. when was one of the camps, and it, it's clearly Daniil's agency that's talking, not the Vikings, I don't think. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, I wondered what took so long. And I also wonder, does this mean that there's trouble or is this just a way? Because, you know, again, I will say it. Every contract negotiation is a pain in the ass. Like Justin Jefferson won't be smooth. I guarantee something will happen or has. Who knows? And Daniil Hunter is not is not going to, to be smooth. Does this mean, though, that the Vikings are actually getting calls and entertaining offers and what Rapport talked about is true, or is this what's the word or the term I'm looking for? Is this the use of a pressure point that actually indicates that things are getting closer? But you know, getting to the finish line in contract negotiations is always the toughest. That you know, it's one thing in a contract negotiation in this league, especially to get in the red zone, it's another to push the ball over the goal line. Wow, and look at I, all those football analogies right there. That was It's impressive. very much what it's all about. It's very Thank you very much. Thank you. And you got to make sure the ball is spotted on the right hash yeah. mark too because oh, if yeah. it's not the whole play can blow up. Well, and Greg Joseph might come in and shank the field goal and that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. I really like the new kicker by the way. Um so to go back to where things are at with him though, uh I think the last time that the Vikings agreed to push money up in in his contract the reason why the base salary for 2022 and three w- was so low was because the vikings took his previous contract when he was not happy with it and they pushed money up i think that was around circa 2019 or 20 yeah. and in that case that deal that announcement got done after we had talked extensively about the problems right before the mandatory mini camp which oh geez is next week so what I make of this is I really think that in, in the case 
of Daniil, who the Vikings clearly still want, and who, by the way, is a very productive player. And he's sort of on that age cliff, but he's not over it. And he plays a position at which it's not, I don't think, as big a fear. Um, I think that this very well might also be part of the last, the last bit of drama or the first and last bit that we have to tolerate here and that a contract gets done unless he's looking for a long-term contract to make up for that awful second contract he signed, which would create real problems. Yeah. But I will not be surprised if next Monday, Rappaport, Pelissero, Schefter, you take your pick, uh, reports that a Daniil Hunter contract is actually done. Interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, you just kind of laid out basically, how, why do we keep getting to this intersection with Daniil and the Vikings? And well, like when he was becoming one of the best edge rushers in the NFL, his agent agreed to a really team friendly contract. And that created some tension after a couple of years. And then when it came time to maybe talk about a new contract, okay, yeah, he's clearly, he's on like a hall of fame trajectory. At one point, I think he had the most sacks of any player under the age of 25 or something. And all right, maybe, maybe we can talk about getting a new bag here for Daniil Hunter, a bag full of cash. And then boom, he misses almost two full seasons right when that conversation might've taken place. He comes back, plays every game. Okay, he's kind of back. He's not quite back to maybe being the best edge rusher in the NFL, but he's, by all measurements, he's a top 10, for sure, top 12 edge rusher in the league, maybe even above that if, like, you know, Zadarius Smith comes falling down out of that category. Um, and and if you're Daniil, I understand why you want the bag. This might be your last chance for a crazy generational life-changing contract. You're going to be 29 years old in October, but if you're the Vikings, for all the reasons you talked about, you're a little hesitant to be too aggressive here. Maybe, maybe we can justify age 29, age 30, but they're literally weighing everyone on an age curve right now. And they're saying, okay, our best players at the premium positions, our left tackle, our tight end, our wide receivers, those guys are, and even our right tackle, Brian O'Neill coming off Achilles. He's like 26, 27. He's probably at the high end of the age window. We need players in that window. And Daniil's a little outside that window. So, God, we could justify keeping you for a couple years, but if Daniil and his camp are saying, now nah, we want like a five-year contract with three or four years of guarantees, maybe you have to explore trading him. So I get it from both sides. I get why Daniil wants to get paid. I get why the Vikings might be a little bit hesitant. And so I would be listening to phone calls too. If I'm Quasi, yeah, like if a team wants to give me a first-round pick, okay, is that first round pick going to be more valuable 2024 through 2026 than a 30, 31, 32 year old Daniel Hunter to what you're trying to build here? That's a really hard question to wrestle with because you're also trying to compete for 2023 to some extent, right? And now that they've moved on from Dalvin, you know, they have a little more of a surplus in cash here. Can they figure out a way to make him happy, which would obviously be the goal here. But again, um, I kind of go back to the same problem they ran into with Dalvin here or the, or the same conclusion it's now June. The majority of really good pass rushers, there's still some out there, are, are gone. You didn't obviously weren't able to address it in the draft because he was still under contract and you you had a, a negotiation that you were hopefully going to be able to extend him. Um, if they can still make Daniil Hunter happy and give him that projected three-year contract that we kicked around from PFF Brad and Will Raggett's yesterday, I'm all for that. Go for it. Sign me up for it. But at the same time, uh, they kind of put themselves in a, in a rock and a hard place here of, well, now what do you do with Daniel Hunter? And if he's off your roster and if you can get some decent trade, you know, compensation back, all right. But now you're if you move on from him, you have a gaping hole at probably the most important position in the NFL on, de on the defensive side, which is a pass rusher who is very, very good. And now all of a sudden you got to replace him. Of all of the off-season decisions that this team has to make or has made, I think this is the most intriguing one. And here's why. Justin Jefferson's going to get done. It might come with some pain, but it's going to get done. Justin Jefferson is not going to be traded. He's not going, he is going to get done. Okay. Kirk Cousins is incredibly interesting, and the quarterback is, but it's a different position. It's a different, it's almost outside of the team itself, right? Quarterbacks uh, command things that other positions and players certainly don't. So, like, it'll be interesting to find out the Vikings approach at quarterback for sure, but that to me lies outside of the team in some ways. The Daniil Hunter one to me is the one that lies inside the team and will speak so much to what this team's intentions are right now and subsequently 
if he's not kept for the future, because this is the one, I, I, this is really the first year you guys, the Quazy and Kevin are really in charge. Like this is the first time it feels like they are making moves yeah. that are, that are their moves. Uh, it's the first time that it doesn't feel like that they are trying to please the Wilfs that they've been get given the green light and they should be to make moves. So this Hunter thing, because he does fall so close to that age cliff, but he's not necessarily off it. He, if Daniil Hunter is traded, there is no, there, the message is this, we're not going to be as good as, as we were for sure, which is probably the case, but it can't be assumed. And we are going to make moves that ensure that the future is brighter. So I just think that this, this single situation with a player who still remains very good, what, 10 and a half sacks last season. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably the most interesting thing re regarding the personnel on the team because I wouldn't include quarterback because that's, again, just so outside of the purview of everything. Daniil, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, was tied for eighth in total pressures last year. If you include playoff sacks, that includes playoff pressures, by the way. So he, he had a pretty good game against the Giants, and he ranked uh, tied for 10th in total sacks. But here's, here's what I would look at. This is, and I kind of brought this up to you guys on the scoop with Doogie here today. What I would consider here, the, I think the first thing would be if, if you can get him signed to a contract, I do think having Daniil Hunter on this team for at least two more seasons is the most valuable thing. I do think that's more valuable than a first-round pick, but the idea of having an extra first-round pick as leverage for a quarterback, I mean, there's some real temptation there. And maybe it's like a second round pick that turns into a first round pick. It's conditional. If he plays, if he gets like 14 sack, I don't know. You, you can make it conditional, but sure. if he's playing contractual hardball, I think Brian Flores, defense can operate and generate pressures and sacks without necessarily that level of an edge rusher. So if you go back to the 2020 dolphins, and this is before they drafted Jalen Phillips, by the way. Jalen Phillips is one of the bright young edge rushers. Or this is like, yeah, because Jalen Phillips was drafted for 2021. Last year was his second year. So the 2020 Dolphins, that was the second year under Brian Flores. They did not have Jalen Phillips. They still ranked 10th in pressures and 10th in sacks. So they were top 10 as a pressure defense. Nobody on that team had more than nine sacks. It was the, it was the scheme, and they have good players, but like, it was the scheme and the aggressiveness that led to the pressures and the sacks more than just one guy doing all the work off the edge. And then they draft with their first round pick, Jalen Phillips. 2021 Dolphins jump up to top five in pressures and top five in sacks. But again, no individual defender on any of those Dolphins teams had more than nine sacks. So could you say, all right, Marcus Davenport's inside the door. He should take a step forward. He's younger by a couple years. Brian Flores is in the door. You're younger, faster, and have a more aggressive defensive scheme. Therefore, you're less reliant on Daniil Hunter. If a team wants to offer a conditional first-round pick, a second conditional first-round pick, maybe like a fourth or a fifth-round pick as a second piece, you make that trade, and then, and Declan kind of alluded to some of these guys, you go get like a 34-year-old, a one-year contract for Melvin Ingram the third or a Justin Houston. Here's the crazy thing about some of these guys that are still available in free agency. Pass rush win rate, okay? Pass rush win rate. Win rate. Important. Very important. This doesn't mean you completed the sack, but it's did you win your matchup? Did you beat your block? Okay. Mm -hmm. Marcus Davenport was ninth last year among edge rushers in pass rush win rate. Just behind Jalen Phillips, Zadarius Smith, who was very good, Micah Parsons, Nick Bosa, and Joey Bosa, and Miles Garrett. That's what the Vikings see. They see pass rush win rate. Can we right. convert those and finish those? Mm -hmm. So they're banking on that. Daniil Hunter was tied for 18th, just behind Justin Houston, available in free agency still, and just ahead of Melvin Ingram, available in free agency still. Now, those guys are in their 30s, and they don't, they're not like every down guys. Those guys would be more third down you're going to mix you're going to mix them in Patrick Jones would see some snaps and be part of a rotation mm -hmm. but they wouldn't cost you much money they'd be one year contracts you could still compete in 2023 without having to worry about maybe overpaying Daniel Hunter who I don't even know if he's out of the injury woods yet he just missed almost two seasons we haven't even talked about that angle I would explore that whole thing that I just laid out to you guys 
That's intriguing. What I would say in Hunter's defense, though, is that he, he still was, what, tied for 18th in pass rush win rate, and he had 10 and a half sacks, and he was not used correctly. Well, um, I mean, but he was still a he was a pass rusher at the end of the day. No, but I mean, he was still, there's so many different ways. I mean, Brian Flores is going to have different ways. You can move him inside, outside. I mean, he was basically put on the shelf and still did a decent job. So, I, I mean, I, I, I think the Vikings would be, if they trade him, um, it would appear that they are committed to, to taking a step back. Now, here's my point. I don't know that's the worst thing. You won 13 games, but it, everyone is basically in agreement that it was fluky. Mm-hmm. And so, like, nobody is saying, well, won 13 games this year. We're going for, you know, 14 or 15. And ultimately, the goal is a Super Bowl. So, it's my opinion that you need to look at not what's best for individual players, not how much, you know, how many fans have 99 jerseys. The smartest thing that you have to do is examine what is your intention with this team. And if they say, if Daniel Hunter says, I need a five-year contract, and the Vikings say, we can't do that. In fact, we won't. Then, yeah, let's trade him for, uh, you know, if you're crazy, trade him for a second-round pick. That becomes a conditional first if he gets X amount of sacks. So that's the thing, though, that intrigues me so much is we don't know what the answers are yet. We mm-hmm. don't know what they're going to decide. You know, with Rick Spielman, we were pretty damn sure Daniil Hunter was going to get that contract and not be traded. Now the door is open. And if you can open the door and say, yeah, OK, we traded him. And in fact, in 2023, we took a step back. But now we got a first round pick potentially. And now we can package that first round pick with our first round pick and a third round pick. And, you know, so there are just, this is one of the, I think this is one of the most interesting times that I can recall from following this team, as far as the unknown and what they're going to do, because, you know, not surprisingly at the end of it all, Rick Spielman was pretty damn predictable because we had seen him operate. It's funny seeing Rick Spielman now on like, all these media platforms. He was doing Sirius XM NFL radio this morning, talking about Dalvin. And yeah, I'm seeing stuff come across Twitter. (laughs) He's got his TikTok channel. He's like, all these big Vikings moves. Rick, what are your thoughts? I love these players. Dalvin Cook, one of the greatest draft picks in NFL history. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, second round. We stole him. But I think I, I just, like back to the injury thing for a second. Are we sure as we weigh the pros and cons of a Daniil Hunter contract extension, I mean, he slept wrong on his neck once and missed a full season. And then he, what did he tear yeah. two years ago? I'm not like mocking him. I'm just saying, no, are no, we sure that he's all, all of a sudden he's just back to being durable after one year? That's another thing to consider here. Absolutely. It is his age and his, and, and the fact that he essentially missed a season and a half between those two separate injuries are definitely things. And you know what? The Vikings might decide it ain't worth it. It's too, it's too big of risk. And if they do, and if they get a conditional first back, okay. But it is, it's just going to speak to their intentions because what was interesting is I think somewhat out of the control of the football operations department a year ago, their intentions were extremely clear. Let's take Zimmer's team and prove that we can win. And they did. But now this is the first time that really O'Connell and Quazy have the keys to the cars. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's where I'm just curious and I'm not even looking to be critical. I am looking to see what they do. What if I could guarantee you just for this? Should they trade him? Should they not? What if I could guarantee you a first round pick in next year's draft, which, by the way, has two of the great young yeah, starting probably, quarterbacks I, we've seen in 10 years? I'd do it. Sign me up. Yeah, if I can get a first round pick for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it would probably be a late first round pick because a team yep. a, it would be a team that's like looking to win a championship. Yeah, but I right? can take that in my first round pick. And again, if I trade him, I'm probably going to be I'm probably assuring myself if if there there was a war for Hunter, what's his war, Phil? Uh, I think actually I think we can. So PFF actually does that. Okay, but they don't. They only list it in certain. They don't have like a full list of it. But I can let me real quick here. Okay, because I, I, mean, I was looking at that this question. morning. It's not what you would think. It's not what you would think. I think what 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 PFF and what like Eric Eager at Sumer Sports and the so the betting markets, the Vegas sports books, they all have a wins above replacement. That's what you're talking about, right? Wins above yep, replacement. Wins above, yes. Quantifiable number. Yep. And what you'll find here is quarterbacks move the needle one, two, three, four wins above replacement. 
non quarterbacks rarely equal a full win because it's there's 53 guys on a roster yeah. so like 0.5 so we tend to overestimate oh my god if you were to replace let me look at when we were talking dalvin cook on the other purple daily episode and declan brought up the year early in dalvin's career where dalvin goes down and and latavius murray and jarek mckinnon replace him mm-hmm. oh my god you're replacing one of the best young running backs in the league with a couple sort of like like a backup and a journeyman yeah and it wasn't it wasn't like your win difference was five wins because you lost Alvin Cook. So PFF in their free agent rankings, they do list wins above replacement. So I'll give you this is and they don't they don't have like a full ranking of all the players, but they did they did have all the edge rushers that were available in free agency. Okay. Like uh Marcus Davenport is worth 0.2 wins above replacement at his best a couple years ago. Which is like if you stack enough of these, obviously, if you add five players that are point to now you've created an extra win, and there's only what 17 games, right? Jadeveon Clowney, point two wins above replacement. Um, Arden Key, edge rusher, point one seven wins above replacement, and then. Yannick, Yannick Ngakwe, because he's so bad against the run, is actually a below replacement level yep. player, which is that's why not, he's still a free agent. That's not surprising. So if you go to, let's go to quarterbacks, because I think I think Lamar Jackson was the only one. We're, again, we're only going to see these numbers on the uh, free agents that were available at the beginning of the year because they don't list this ordinarily. So Lamar Jackson, when he plays a full season, is worth like one and a half to two wins above a replacement quarterback. And that's why when you bring Hundley in, Hundley is like a replacement quarterback. Mm-hmm. You bring Hundley in, it's not a total disaster. You're definitely not, instead of 11 wins, you're going to win nine or whatever. Right, but it's not the end of the world. The way Geno Smith played last year, he was a three wins above replacement quarterback. Yeah, that's not really good. Yeah, that's really, really good. It's not going to happen again. I Derek, don't think Derek, Derek Carr at his best a couple of years ago was a three win above replacement quarterback. Last year, 1.2. So he took a big step back. Okay, so Hunter would be probably a quarter of a win above replacement. Yeah, yeah. So yes, if you can get a first round pick, I'm doing that. Now I now we're late enough in the off season, and teams are going to know that the Vikings are struggling on a contract with Hunter. So I don't know how much that potentially drops your leverage. But yeah, if you if you tell me that I can get a first round pick, and I don't care where, for Hunt Hunter. Mm-hmm. I make that trade. I think you have to. Yeah. And and again, it sets you up. Yep. So let us know. Yeah, let us know in the comment section. What do you think? I mean, I know there's some fans that are just adamant that Quasi is a blithering idiot for even considering. Well, what do you think of that? Let's 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 dive into that in a second here. Now that Dalvin's gone and this idea of trading Hunter, the Quasi referendum, and then we'll get to a random Viking of the week. Okay. But uh, a quick shout out to our friends over at Power Lodge and Miller Marine. My goodness, these Bennington pontoons, and there are more. There's a boatload, pun intended, <laughs> of Bennington pontoons. Miller Marine, the largest Bennington pontoon dealer you're going to find in the country here. But imagine during these off-season months putting your hands on the steering wheel of one of these bad boys here, Judd Zolgad. Mm. Yeah, there's a term for, for that, Phil Mackey, and it's called throttle therapy, and it's because every Minnesota sports fan – needs throttle therapy look at that sun's going down you're out on a gorgeous summer day on your bennington you're enjoying life and you know what you're forgetting all your troubles you're forgetting wide left you're forgetting ill-timed fumbles you are focused on the fact that you and your family are having a great time on a bennington and that my friends in june and july august that's the most important thing yeah over 300 pontoons in stock powerlodge.com and millermarine.com uh, Federated Insurance, also one of our great partners here on Purple Daily and across Score North, they are here to help elevate the success of your business. So whatever it is that your business, maybe you can go to their website, by the way, federatedinsurance.com and uh, and see if your business matches the industries that they specialize in. If you are a next generation business owner, maybe you're taking over from mom, dad, the family business. Federated works closely with next generation business owners. So check them out, federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of negativity toward Quasi here from corners of the Vikings fan base that you get you get nothing for Dalvin Cook. And now they're gonna trade Daniel Hunter. What's going on around here? What what do some of these moves here now that now that these are stacking up 
over the last three months, going back to Thielen and Kendricks, what's the referendum on Kwesi here? Well, for, first of all, I think he got off to an extremely strong offseason because Kendricks and Thielen were handled perfectly. I think their value after 2022 was basically zero. So I loved both of those moves. The Cook move I also like. Is there a lesson to, uh, to be learned if he was ultimately offered a draft pick? Yes, yes. Is it a screw-up beyond belief? No, it's not. It is. It is something where... Um, if you don't think a player has a lot of value, you're not going to rob a team who says, no, we think Dalvin Cook is still headed for Canton. So, um, but would I rip him for it? Absolutely not. Overall, I think that this whole thing, though, right now, as far as trying to pass a judgment, I think the whole thing is a work in progress. I think it's impossible to grade it. Um, I don't know where it's going to end up. Like, this is their first opportunity. Again, last offseason appeared to be the Wilfs blueprint, okay? And and it, they own the team. So if they say you ain't making moves, you ain't making moves. But this is the first time that we get to see the work in progress that is the reinvigorating of the Vikings roster. And so I am not going to sit, sit here and say, well, the Delvin Cook thing is such a screw-up, it's terrible. Is Quasi potentially, at this point in time, in o- over his head? Perhaps. I don't know. But... I like some of the moves, and I think that cutting ties with a group of veteran players who uh, gave you a last gasp and some not really well is absolutely the right thing. So if I had to, if you were to ask me right now in June, you you know, does pass fail? Does Quasi get a fail? No, absolutely not. He gets a pass right now. But it's still, there's a lot to be determined, including the most important thing at the end of the day, which is going to be the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So... He definitely has done a what I would call a pretty solid job given what what he's you know what he inherited. But here's the thing, and here's how this probably is going to end up going if things end up going south for the Vikings. That these are the kind of the first things this waiting to cut Dalvin, potentially fumbling Daniel Hunter's negotiation and or trade. The evidence starts to build there, and even the you could even put in the conversation of not wanting to extend Kirk Cousins. Like you're going to go into QB uncertainty technically as you as you're currently constructed right now so how much time does he have to to really mold his own roster because i think that's going to be the biggest thing here you ready you say goodbye to some veterans that's fine good for you but there's some evidence that probably is mounting where some people who are probably already calling for quasi's head are stacking those pieces of evidence to use if he inde- if the vikings indefinitely just start being a terrible football team beyond 2023 well and, and i think also cuz some of this is like you're retooling and you're tearing some of the things down. You're remodeling the house a little bit here. You get more leeway to do that coming off of the firing of everyone. Okay, mm-hmm. we're going to clean out the house, and now we need to do some renovations to the house. It's like, no, a new family is going to move into the house as is. Furniture mostly intact, paint, everything. It's You're coming in, and it's fully furnished, and you can't – wait, can I bring in my own couch? Nope, you got to live in it for at least a year. Those are the terms of the lease. And so – it looks bad, especially the way that they won 13 games. Just inevitable regression across the board. Schedule is harder, everything. So if they take a big step back, I wonder how many people, and I, th- I think ownership understands what's happening here, but I wonder how many people would say, oh, well, looks like the shine wore off on this franchise, right? Where in reality, this was all an inevitable uh, an inevitable part of the plan when you had so many aging guys on your team. I would be far more frustrated though, if they didn't jettison guys. So if they said, well, we won 13 games that worked out pretty damn well. Let's bring yeah. the, let's bring the crew back again. Okay. I'd criticize them then. I would, I would, I think what they have done for the most part and have there been missteps? Absolutely. Um, but I think what they've done for the most part with personnel decisions on the roster is right. And I'll tell you this right now. I think the place, the Quasi, it remains to, to be seen. And we don't know this as well. But I think it's going to be the easier one to judge here um, among the first things that we can actually judge him on is going to be his drafts mm-hmm. or the draft. You know, if Lewis Seen again, if Lewis Seen is on the bench when the season starts, that's not a real good first round pick. Yeah. So like those are the type of things where. If you don't like these moves, it's because you like the, the players, which is fine. I'm not criticizing anyone. You buy jerseys, your fans, you should like the players. That's fine. 
But it's you know, kind of, that's a little condescending. That was a little. I'm just saying. I understand if you bought if you went out and bought a number four Dalvin jersey for one season, you did it because you're a fan because you love the team. But the reality is this: he's an aging player, and even if he has a good year, like Dukes keeps saying that he thinks that Dalvin Cook has one really good good year left. Mm-hmm. I I don't care. Like I'm not going to say, God, did that screw the Vikings? Because the reality is, if you are on on our before I die track of winning a Super Bowl before we, we die, it almost certainly is not going to be in 2000. Uh, 23 or that season right it's going to be built up in the next couple of years it could happen build it the right quick, way but build exactly it the right way. exactly there, don't run things back part of building it the and, right way is not paying linebackers and running backs a lot yep. of money yep. unless you're just really lucky with some of the other positions so i love the focus on pass catchers bringing in hawkinson drafting jordan addison having justin jefferson i love the focus on buying low on an edge rusher and marcus davenport like i i I see what they're doing here. And I read these tweets on the live scoop session with Doogie here, but I think it's relevant for the Purple Daily audience in case they didn't listen to that episode. I align fully with what PFF Brad tweeted this morning. And this is this is what we've been saying for six months. And he articulated it very similarly here, said, Vikings and Quasi know that their 2022 record was fraudulent, and instead of doubling down, they are asking, would player X meaningfully contribute in 2024 and beyond? This is exactly what we've been saying, which is bank on regression. The way you won those games, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to give them back. It was a super fun season, but prepare as if you are an eight-win team instead of a 13-win team and be objective about it. And think about the horizon. Don't just be operating in a vacuum for 2023. Would player X meaningfully contribute in 2024 and beyond? If the answer on an expensive player isn't a resounding yes to that question, they're moving on. Delvin was clearly not a yes. Hunter. He's in the border. Yep. God, he's, he's the right there, man. Yeah, he's the And guy. maybe because he's right, maybe it, because it's not a resounding yes, is he going to help you in two years from now? Probably. Yeah. But this is what, what they're wrestling with. And don't forget, too, we have... And so th- this provides the ultimate curveball in in decisions, though. There are, in front of Brzezinski and Kwesi, there are, what, four, three or four contracts in which you're going to have to make decisions. Justin Jefferson is going to get paid. And in two years, that's going to kick in. And mm-hmm. that's going to probably be, at the time, the highest paid contract to a non-quarterback in the entire league. TJ Hawkinson wants his. He probably deserves that too. So like as as we go through all of these potential contracts, the question becomes this. um, Do you want to put yourself up against the cap again? And with whom do do you want to do it? And that's where Hunter also provides a little bit of a problem here because if he wants three years or four years and now you're going into the Justin Jefferson contract, well, like something has to give. Yeah. Yeah. And the other tweet here, from Joe Banner, who Joe Banner helped build the Eagles into a really good team. Crusty old guy. Crusty old guy. You probably covered him a little bit. Joe Banner. Around the NFL. So he has a Twitter account. And this morning he said, not every move the Vikings are making will be right, but the approach is what every turnaround that had significant long-term sustained success is the model they are using. So, yeah, it's it sucks as a, as a fan if they wind up having to say goodbye to – favorite players Dalvin Cook maybe Daniel Hunter but if it's all putting chips on the on the window of 2024 to 2026 because that's when Jefferson and Hawkinson and Derisaw and maybe your future starting quarterback are all rising up then that's what you have to do and since for the time being Hunter is still here and very well might be signed to an extension I don't think there's any veteran that the Vikings have parted ways with that I have any criticism about. Thielen, good move. Kendricks, good move. Pat P, you're going to play man coverage. You're going to play man coverage. Pat, Pat, Pat P is not playing man coverage, and that guy would have been burned consistently. That's a good move. And Dalvin ultimately is a good move. That contract had to come off this roster. Yep. So, Are you guys ready for a random Viking Challenge here. 
Absolutely. Judd versus, you know, actually what I've done here is for the first time, because now that Judd on uh, Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd, our other show, now that Judd is doing clues for the random Minnesota athlete, we're going to start having Judd do clues. So losers out every week. Losers out. So I was the loser last week, which means Perfect. I give you guys the clues. Declan rule. So historically, I've separated these out here too. Judd, 53 wins all time. Declan, 24 wins all time. I have eight wins all time. Uh, I started kind of like three quarters of the way into this yeah, excursion, you, so I got some catching up to do. Yeah, you're absolved. I'm still not performing very well, though. I haven't had a win in like two months, so. No, you're struggling, but I mean, you you did start. I, I think it was Declan against, uh, against me for a long time with you mm -hmm. being the clue master, so... Eight wins is pathetic, but it's not as pathetic as it looks uh, because you didn't start. So I am absolving. My last win was Dwayne Rudd, like several weeks ago. Damn, I should have got that. I should have beat you on that one. That was me. I fell apart. A few of the more recent random Vikings include Brad Johnson, Fred Smoot, Greg Lewis, Mike Tice, Javon Walker, JT O'Sullivan, and Anthony Carter. So I'm going to give you guys a series of clues. You get up to three incorrect guesses each until you are eliminated. You can shout out answers whenever you want to. You can ask me questions. I can refuse to answer if I want. This is presented by our friends at Meadows, by the way. The Meadows at Mystic, Declan. You know, I've been talking about how great that Pro Shop is, so I figured, okay, I would I would actually show you a video of what that Pro Shop looks like. Look, you got you got hat options. You got new Look shoe this, dude. options, okay? I've been telling this Pro Shop's not your rinky-dink Pro Shop that has a couple oh. sleeve of balls. This has a legit apparel option. They have tons of different stuff in this Pro Shop. And obviously with Father's Day uh, coming up here, you should go to golfthemeadows.com. Uh, and see those tee times, but also you can get a frequent player card. You know, if you're like me and you're always looking for tee times, like basically one, once Monday starts and looking at next weekend's tee sheet, well, you can get access three weeks in advance with a frequent player card. You can get this and more at golfthemeadows.com. Go to golfthemeadows.com to learn more. All right. This random Viking hails from Kansas City, Missouri originally. This random Viking played college football in the Big 12. This random Viking once reportedly overslept and missed a team photo. With the Vikings? Uh, no. Not with the Vikings. This random Viking apparently showed interest in joining the FBI at one point. Oh. A fan website claimed he attended an FBI oh. job fair. <laughs> FBI, uh, FBI. Yeah. Big twelve. I remember something. Yeah. Declan, you gotta you gotta guess? Uh, yeah, do it, Dex. Guess Dex. Do it. No, I don't I don't know the player yet, but I remember this fact. I do too. I don't. I don't remember this fact. I remember no. this fact, but it might not be the only I I my thought is this. Is it the same guy? Because, I mean, there are players that do stuff like this. Just a bunch of NFL players. It, 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 FBI ro ro makes Roaming sense. around, wanting to... KOC's dad was a bigwig. And That's what I, that first came in to the mind. FBI. Yeah. Okay. All right. This random Vikings father played in the United States Football League with the Pittsburgh Maulers and the Orlando Renegades. This random Viking once earned National College Player of the Week honors after a big conference win. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. That was a very Judd clue. Big conference win. Father. This random Viking ran a 4.97 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine. What was it? 4.97. Just under five. Just under five. 4.97. Which could either be avoiding embarrassment or could be pretty fast, depending on the position that this random Viking plays. This random Viking once attended CFL week in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and witnesses saw him smoking a cigarette during the festivities. Oh. Wait, what? This oh. is when he was still definitely like of age to play professional football. Oh, I don't know if he was there like... He was just, the anecdote is he once attended CFL week in Winnipeg, Manitoba, maybe kicking the tires. 
and witnesses saw him smoking a cig during the festivities. <laughs> Just rip Did he play in the CFL? Do we know? Uh, he. I don't think he ever played a game in the CFL. Let me just confirm here. Hold on. Oh my God. I don't think he ever got to the point where he played a game in the CFL. Okay, he right. like fl- he like flirted. All with right, it. I got to yeah. guess. He was an off-season or practice squad member of a CFL team for a cup of coffee, but he never got into a game. I've I've got to guess. I've had this guy in mind for I don't know why he always comes to mind, but he I think the I think he fits the profile. Is it Darius Renaud? Mm. Mm. No. Okay. I, I, think, I thought he played in the Pac-12. Or oh. in Pac-12. I thought he played in the Big 12. He, he was, uh, wasn't Darius Reynaud at LSU? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I just. Okay, so I guess. I don't know right. why I know that. If that's true, then I deserve it. That's a great poll if you know that. A lot of facts being pulled out here. Ah, uh, you're right. He was West Virginia. It was another yellow, a yellow team. CFL week. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette. Okay, uh, this uh, random Viking of the week was a first-round NFL draft pick. But not by the Vikings. Not by the Vikings. <sighs> that FBI thing happened in 2020, by the way, where he was he was at the FBI job fair in 2020. Oh, my God. I vaguely remember. I th- This yes. is the same guy then. Oh. Come on, Dex, guess. This random Viking played 62 career NFL football games. Which really isn't that much for a first round pick. I'll take a stab. I don't think we've used this guy. Is it Josh Freeman? Woo! Oh, oh, let's go! oh no! Oh, wow! Oh, this is a heater of epic proportions. Wow. Declan, five consecutive wins over Judd with his Josh Damn, Freeman I guess. I should have known you like to do quarterback. Wow. All right, I'm doing Amazing, clues dude. So, yeah, my only other clues were that he played one game with the Vikings and okay. once led the NFL in fourth quarter comebacks with five in his, I think, second season with the Buccaneers. So. I should have known you You love quarterbacks. Oh, Thank they're God. the most fun. Yeah, Josh Freeman. Good job. A man. one-time, one-game Viking, a disastrous Monday night game against the Giants in which oh, uh, no, no, man, no I... bird was safe. <laughs> I bought some stock in that move. I thought that was going to be great. Spielman loved oh, God. Rick loved that guy when he came out in the draft. Well, they just put that's him right, in a Kansas game State. as a starter a week after they signed him. Yeah, just a was, total disaster. Oh, that's how bad Ponder was, right? Was Ponder healthy that week? Just suck. And the castle was on the team, too. Kansas State. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. Random Viking of the week. Declan with five straight wins over Judd. As we'll try and change that next week when I am doing the clues. So, yeah, Judd will do the clues next week. I can week. do the Take clues a next seat, week. guy. That's yep. right. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to – uh, I'm going to be throwing fastballs a week from today. <laughs> awesome, man. We'll send you the list because, obviously, like, we've done – Yeah. I'm going to pick up – Almost we've done 85 of these. you to flail away. All right. <laughs> it's 40 minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> Judd's offered 100 clues. I don't know, Judd. It's the left guard from 1963. Yep. It sounds good. All right, thanks for hanging out with us here. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.